aspects, which is the most important thing in our organization. Especially now, the sinasabi nila, ang mga tao ngayon, it wala nang respect sa isa isa. Even a uh, salita, salita natin ngayon is wala nang respect. O, minsan din na natin alam kung sino yung junior and senior ko tinatawag natin. Now, I'll give the floor and exit mo ng beauty ko. I'll give the floor to Miss Bell. I'll see you later, guys. Uh, enjoy and have question. Chat nyo lang. If either, kung gusto nyo later after discussion, eh, mapasama ang uh, dito sa harap sa harapan, sa stage namin, just uh, type live and later we give you live. You can ask directly question to Miss Bell. Okay? Sige, Miss Bell. See you later. It's all yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Judy. Good afternoon, everyone. I am glad to be back. Uh, this is my third webinar for for the Philippine Society of Admin and HR. And I'm happy that every time I'm giving webinars like this, I'm able to reach out to some people. And um, in my experience in the last two webinars that we, ha that we had, um, in one way or the other, people have gotten a, a, a thing a thing or two from from the seminar and that i would like to i would like to give you that experience also um but let me just set this thing no um i will not be able to give you anything um i can only say these things but if you want to take it it's yours i cannot i cannot tell you you have to do this you have to do that I can tell you these are the things that are being done. And if you want to take them, well and good, you can use them. You can take them. Uh, by the way, sometimes our system is not working. You can just send your emails. If uh, there's a problem with the audio or the video, please let, let us know so we can fix our, our microphones and the camera as well. Thank you. So this afternoon, our topic is winning respect, especially now that a lot of people are working outside of the normal office. Um, but to me, respect is whether wherever you are, it should be present. Whether you're talking to your boss over the phone or face to face, or you're talking to somebody through internet, there are uh, there are requirements of being respectful in the words that you say, in the tone, and how you deliver your your message. No, so. Let me proceed with uh, with this. Oops, my bad. Hello. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Let me begin with this. When we are in an organization, we are actually forming, forming relationships. Oh, by the way, most of our discussions now will be uh, in the environment of work. No? Although this concept applies to our personal lives as well. But for now, we'll be focusing on the work environment. So let's talk about relationships. Relationships in an organization is always existing, and you have several relationships in the organization. So, for example, whether you're a team leader or a team member, you have relationships with your head, with your comrades, with the people around you, with your teammates. No? Now, according to, according to one of the authors, John Mac Maxwell, respect is the first thing that should be that the or the organization or the team should have respect is at the foundation if you see uh there are five items here respect is at the bottom meaning all the four items on top of respect begin with respect so when you say respect um this is something we know that we cannot we cannot demand from people so initially in a team, for example, you are the head of the team. Initially, the respect is coming from uh, the fact that you are the 
head of the team. So the respect is on the position. And people follow your orders because they respect the position. And in fact, in organizations, if you don't, do not respect the position, you'll be you'll be um, met with certain disciplinary actions. Okay? So respect is something that is at the bottom because it is the start of it all. Um, and then, when there is respect among the people in the team, it could be the immediate team or could be the entire organization, um, you develop shared experiences along the way. So, for example, this is the first time you've been together as a team, then you develop, you have that respect for one another, and then along the way, you share experiences, no? So, for a team to be successful, apart from respect, when there's already respect, there should be shared experiences because this will determine the commonality of the team, no? So, for example, uh, you're a new training team, for example, you have to, you, you share, you have shared experiences in terms of uh, conducting your programs, developing your programs, dealing with your, your, your uh, audience, and so on and so forth. After the shared exper experiences, then you develop the trust. You cannot develop the trust unless there is respect, unless there, is, there are shared experiences to begin with. In other words, as you work together, you develop the trust between one another. Uh, you develop your trust with your people. Your people develop their trust in you. You develop your trust with, uh, with the people you work with and so on and so forth. No? Uh, it is a very essential part of a relationship. Even, for example, for, for in the personal life, so for couples, for, for partners. No? So that's very important. Without trust, um, relationship will be very difficult. Then you go to the next level, which is reciprocity. All right, what what is it? It means there is already a give and take. So, because you trust one another, you know that if you give a little bit, if you give away for one bit, next time around you'll get will get the same the same favor. All right, in the future, near or far. And then afterwards, when all these four are there, then you can have mutual enjoyment, meaning you will get to enjoy working with one another. I remember having teams where when we were so meted already and we were already able to develop the trust, the, the, the respect, we had shared experiences, the, the relationship is reciprocal, where we enjoy even the problems that we encounter. We solve them together. We enjoy doing those things together. So, if uh, if these all these five are present in your team, you can have so solid relationships. So, um, again, as I was saying, our focus is on the on the work on the work area. But if you look at this, you can also look at what about the personal uh, the personal application of of this concept no so again solid relationships is built on first respect and then the shared experiences and then trust and then reciprocity and then mutual enjoyment so for your relationship to be solid you should have all these five all these components in your team Okay, so what is respect? Respect is your desire to place value on another person. You want the other person to feel that he's valuable as as far as you are concerned. Okay, no. Consumption. Hello po sa lahat na nakajo-join pa lang. Okay. So what is respect? We say it's the desire you place, but it's, it's your desire to place value on another person. It means you make the other person important or valuable. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, no person ever created by God is not valuable. Every person standing here on earth, living here on earth has its own 
value. So, in other words, if you meet a new person or if you meet your boss every time, you have to make sure that you are valuing that person. Respect is the glue that holds relationship together. So we said earlier, that's the, that's the foundation of relationship. There should be respect first. Um, if looking, working, looking back on the first slide that we that we viewed, no? um, the 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 relationships can be very very fluid. No, if you have all those five items, uh, the the respect, shared experiences, the trust, reciprocity, and mutual enjoyment, very very fluid, um, and you can be you're like you're glued together to do something to accomplish something i have worked with certain very powerful um groups and i would like to share with you i i have worked with certain teams that are where, where we developed a very solid team and um we were able to in real estate we were able to do a monthly presentation in hotels on top of the the weekly trippings and what have you. So how many were we? We were just six in the team. So every month we would have different different uh, concepts and they are very much appreciated by our management and our clients as well. So if you have that kind of a team that you're glued together, you move forward together, there's so much um, uh, understanding with one another so that it that is where you can see that there's much respect there's much trust in in everyone no? respect is accepting others for who they are even if they are different from you or even if you do not like them especially if they're part of your team even if you don't like somebody in the team even if you don't like your boss or the boss doesn't like you you can't do anything about it because you're put together to work okay so it's just a matter of accepting the person, whatever they are, whoever they are. Difficult? <laughs> but this is reality. In every organization, there are people you don't want to work with. There are people you don't want to even look at to. But you have to accept them because they're part of your team. So that is respecting people, you know? Um, So respecting doesn't only mean you respect the the head. Bakit ayaw gumadaw ng power from kayan? Ang taga, is no motion. Okay. Why is it necessary that respect is in your team? Number one, if you respect one another, you can have a more open and honest communication because you know that your opinion is respected. So, for example, uh, you have an idea and you know that your boss will not like your idea. Chances are you, you won't just say it because you know that your boss will just get angry with you uh, because your idea is not good. But if there is respect for everyone's idea, every person in the team will be open and honest in communicating with everyone. So, you can easily generate ideas because there's no whole bar, no? Um, uh, if generation of ideas is only given to the heads, then you will have a very limited source of ideas. So what am I saying? If you are a leader, if you are a supervisor or a manager, and you have, say, five, ten people, be able to have to, to, to work on an open communication and a communication that allows feedback, that allows people to talk. Because, ladies and gentlemen, nobody has the monopoly of intelligence. Mind you, nobody has the monopoly of anything. Um, that is why nobody is perfect, okay? So the Siddharata says, if you know that, uh, that point, 
it says at any given time, somebody is better than me, somebody is less than me. So what can I do? Should I be absolutely the most powerful? Or should I respect people even if they are below me or up there above me? Okay. So when you have respect in your team, people feel valuable. So it, initially we said respect is finding value in somebody. So if people feel valuable, if they feel they are important, their ideas are important in your team, they can be better engaged member of your team. All right? So when you say engaged person, the person who is rearing with passion, the person who is... Um, very proud to be part of the team the person who is doing an extra mile for the team so you don't really have to worry about um lazy lazing people uh, because you know that engaged members of your team find their value at mahihiya po silang hindi magtrabaho ng ayon sa expectation nila sa inyo because they know that that is their value in the team so when you have respect in your team, you can con easily resolve conflicts among your team because there is respect. Um, as I was saying, there's no nobody has the absolute control of anything. Um, the the absolute intelligent person in this world, everybody has in one way or another has some difficulties. I can I cannot I have not seen anybody who is perfect in this world. No? So when you have when there is conflict in your team, it would be easier not only to the team leader but to the team members to resolve conflict because sometimes it's just misunderstanding. You no, know? sometimes people would just uh, misunderstand something or give another meaning to what has been said. So if there is respect. So you are able to uh, explain to one another what you meant about things. Because there is respect for your idea, it would be easier to resolve the conflict. And then you can share accountability if you respect one another. So for example, one person in your team is best at doing something. Because there's respect among you and the person feels that he is being respected because of that one thing that we can do for the organization. The person can be asked to do something more than what is in his job description. So what we're saying here is that if you develop respect among your team, you as the leader, for example, if you're a leader, you develop that environment of respect and people respond to that environment, then you can have a making of a good team, a team that would face any difficulty in the future. So does it, does, it, does it mean that we have to be together to be a team? No, I have worked in, I have worked in, in companies where I had HR teams in Visayas, Mindanao. So I have been to Iloilo, uh, Bohol, Cebu, in, in Davao, and I have teams in the north, in, in uh, Kabanatuan. I have teams in Metro Manila. I mean, you don't really have to work together as a team. But because there is common respect on what everyone has to accomplish, then we were able to carry out the objectives of the team. So the question now, the question now is, how, we, how are we going to do this while uh, we're separated from one another? Many people are working from home, for example, or many people are, are we, we're able to talk to people only through, through internet or through online. When there is respect, it, the medium doesn't matter. That's what I'm telling you. The medium will not matter if there is respect with one another. You can still proceed with the things that you're supposed to do as if you are doing it together physically. So there's power to your team if uh, you build your relationship on respect. Now, who should respect who? 
ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned earlier, everyone in this world, standing in this world, was created by one creator, regardless of your religion, doesn't matter. But we were created by just one creator, no less than a God who created us. And therefore, who deserves respect? Everybody does. Everybody does. Do my children deserve my respect? Yes, of course. Do my grandchildren deserve respect? I don't have grandchildren. Yet. But what am I saying? Do little people deserve my respect? Of course. Because if I look at them, they were created by God, like me. So in organizations, you don't respect only those that are powerful, those that can be of good influence. You don't respect only those people. You respect everybody. You respect the janitor the way you respect your CEO. I mean, everybody deserves it. Okay? So you should, everybody should respect everybody regardless of circumstance. Because there's no absolute absolute truth. There's no absolute intelligence. There's no absolute whatever. Now, how do you respect, how do, how, how is respect from others develop? I have noticed that I have attendees uh, of the two webinars, no, in the past. And I'm glad that you're, you're back. But this is the third time you will be hearing it from me. How is respect from others develop? I would always, I would always say you developed your hand, your heart, your head and your heart. What is your hand? These are your, these are what you can do. These are what you can do. Like, for example, you're an accountant. You can do bookkeeping. Diba? You can do financial analysis. If you're an HR, you can do recruitment. Those are technical aspects that your hands can do. What about your head? Your head can think. So we call we call our bosses heads, no? Because they do the thinking. And then also the heart. So there are three HS HS that you have to develop to be respected. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are human beings. Whether you like it or not, people look at what you can do. For example, you're a newly you're a newly installed supervisor. To a new to a to a section people will assess you on the basis of what you can do right people will think of what can this person contribute to the team how can this person lead the team all right so you have to develop yourself in all these areas and i would like offhand to tell you that you should not stop developing yourself meaning Look at the look at the areas of your hands, meaning your capability to work, your your technical skills. Look at them and ask yourself in which area should I develop myself? So do not stop. Because if you stop and you say, I know it, alam ko na yan, you start you stop learning, you stop, you start stagnating. Because when you tell yourself you know that already. You start stagnating. All right. So, since this thing said, respecting each member of the team will help the organization to reach a better result. Correct, man. All right. So, I hope this is one take home that you can get from this session. That you develop yourself, your hands, what you can do, your head, what you can process in your head, what you can decide on, and your heart. So you develop your competencies in these three areas. You can never stop. You should not stop developing yourself. Good afternoon, Miss Christina. You should not stop developing yourself. The moment you say you know it, then you stop, stop learning, and you stagger, you stagger already as a person. Okay. So if you want respect from people you look at yourself you look at your hand what can you do you look at your head you look at your heart so you don't stop learning okay uh, 
Ah, because there's recording pala, kaya medyo, ano dit, no? Medyo mag-bother tayo. Alright. So the hands, what will you, what will you develop in terms of your hands? The mastery of your craft. Um, your competence. So, because your mastery of your craft will allow you to do, to work with your hands on a particular area. Um, I would, I would like to share with you earlier when I introduced myself, when, I, when, when uh, Judith gave me an ambush interview, I told you that I shifted my career four times. So what was my natural, natural career? My natural career is in mathematics, in computers. Um, in, when, when, when I became a programmer, I became a systems analyst, and then I started teaching people using the computer, still in information technology. At first, my, all, my question is always to my bosses, do you think I can do this? Yes, I think you can do this. I was thinking if my boss, if my boss um, is confident that I can, what's uh, keeping me from not being confident that I can? So I have to learn the things that I need to do. So from IT, I went to real estate. I remember, and I would like to share this with you. I was a trainer for information technology. If you know informatics, I worked there for four years. I was a head trainer there. But when I went to real estate, I was dealing with brokers and agents. It was really very difficult. You know, the first time I conducted my my training with them, after the whole eight hours, I was sit I was seen at the end of the day, seen at the corner of the, the training room, seated, because I felt so tired. Why? Because in, in, in computer training, I will just tell my, my audience, do you, have, do you see the same screen as you can see on my board? And if they say they do not, I will just tell them, okay, do this. And they will do it and we will have the same screen. But if you train people if you tell them one concept, if you have 20 participants, 20 different ideas are put on the table to process. And that was very difficult. So I remember my first month, I told my boss, I want to go back to information technology because training people is very difficult. But my boss said, no, Bell, it's just your first try. So go ahead. And then I tried it, tried, tried, and tried. So I became a, a sales trainer. In other words, you have to really master your craft. You really have to um, look into what my hands can do. What am I competent about? So that I can build, I can build the respect. I can show to my people that I am respectable. I remember the first time I became a manager for the training training department because the manager left and she recommended to my boss that I should be the one made as training manager. There were there were uh, there were six, eight people in the team and two of them were were were, were not were slightly younger than me in terms of age, but they have better experience in terms of training, my longer period of behavioral training experience. But uh, I was the one assigned. So it took me five months to, to gain the respect of that particular particular trainer who happens to be a friend, a very good friend of mine now. Uh, it took me five months to prove to him that I can do the job. So what, what did I do? I mastered the craft. I, I made him see that I can do the job. So later on, he just was full of respect to me. That's what I'm saying. You have to master what you are supposed to be doing. Because also, if you master what you're doing, what you're supposed to be doing, your hands can do. If there are problems in your team, you can easily spot the problem and find ways to solve the problem. So that's the beauty of mastering your craft. So number one, you gain respect of your people. That's a personal experience that I would like to really share with you. Um, it wasn't easy because every end of the day, I would ask myself, what more can I do? What more can I can I show him so that 
uh, he would uh, he would respect me as a colleague because he respected me as a person but to be respected as a colleague is something else so but i'm very happy that up until now he's a very good friend from what 25 years ago he's a very good friend of mine so you have to really look at mastering yourself and do not get tired of learning because if you do you'll just be there you'll just be there okay then we go to the head you have to as a head you have to do planning remember uh if you are a, if you are a supervisor you are a manager you have the plan the plot the ploc planning leading organizing controlling functions okay so you have to you have to be able to make good plans cast good judgment for decisions manage performance fairly and equitably so as a head your 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 head should be able to process these things because this will this will make your people respect you more if you if they know that you are not you are not just doing the thing on a sporadic mode meaning you do plan you look at the you know you look at the consequences of your plan and so on and so forth or you can make sound decisions for your team or you manage the performance of the people in a very fair and just manner you gain respect of people um you can again you can look at you can you can be a friend to somebody without necessarily being biased with his performance or with a performance rating so that is your maturity as a head no? and you gain respect out of that if people will see that you're able to separate your personal to from from professional dealings with your people and you can cast a very good um, rating for their performance you can gain the respect of your people all right so as head you have to develop your skills in planning your decision making and your managing performance skills so uh you cannot develop all these things in just one training alone in other words you, you just don't rely on training you can a lot of things are already on the internet you just have to select which are the true ones no? and you have to select your authors that you would like to look into no? but in other words um you you should hone your skills your that the skills required by the head so that you can gain respect of people then we go to the heart okay we go to the heart so yung puso naman natin you develop your responsibility and responsiveness um it's not the case that okay when you delegate something in the previous uh, sessions that we had uh we talked about delegation no? when can you actually delegate so you delegate to a person who is competent and, and who is willing to do the job you delegate the responsibility but you cannot delegate the full accountability so you just delegate the responsibility but you have to be responsive what does responsiveness mean it means the person is handling the responsibility doing the thing because you have delegated to the person the responsibility uh you have to be responsive meaning that's why you have to do some monitoring monitoring of what monitoring of the accomplishment of the task monitoring of the of the motivation of the person and so on and so forth so you can be responsive you will know how you can help the person so this one is a function more of the heart than the head no? so because you really want you sincerely want to help your people perform their tasks then 
you have to be responsible and responsive to them. So you're responsible. If you're the head, you're responsive, responsible to the management. So whatever your people do, you're responsible for that. And you have to embrace it. If you're not embracing it, like, for example, there's something that went wrong and your boss would come to you and say, why did it go wrong? And you will say, it's because of my staff. Uh, you will lose all the respect that your people would have for you. Okay? And then, you develop an openness of your heart. So if your heart is open, your, your head will surely open. Openness to what? Openness to what people will say, what your people will say, to the feelings of your people, to the need of your people. Openness to the feedback of your people. Um, in leadership, you just don't give feedback yourself. You have to learn to receive feedback as well without justifying. Okay, for example, your, your, your subordinate would tell you, sir, I think you're you're not you're not being fair by by giving me a very low score, a very low rating, and you will just defend yourself. You you try to understand why do you think I am not fair? You, can you tell me why why you think I'm not fair? So you open opportunities to understand. It's not only to um, to hear out, but to understand. Open your heart. It's the, it's the question of your heart. Can you, can you accept those feedback? Because if you can accept those feedback, chances are your people will respect you more. Your people will be more open. Okay? So practice that. Learn that. Learn to be open. Open your heart. Open your mind. So when you open your heart, your mind opens as well okay professionalism uh, like not because you are the head you can come late to the meetings or you have a secretary who will bring your laptop to the meeting room while everybody's waiting and you come in 10 minutes after the the scheduled meeting openness is seeing things from another person's perspective okay correct ma'am. that's why you have to listen so you can understand why what the person means by uh so it it, it has to, to do with listening no okay so let it not be your let it not be your stance that because you are the head or the leader uh you are you have that license to be late I'm the leader, so it's okay if I'm late. No. Professionalism would be beginning from you. Like, for example, uh, you, want, you want a report to be done. And uh, you do not see that um, the report is according to your, to what? To, to your liking like the format and all that how can you tell the person to revise it so you have to be dealing with the person not as if she's your child that you will spunk if the the report is not okay so you have to be professional in saying that this is how you want it done so Hindi makita yung comment section. Um, Miss Admin, can you please help Miss Jen? Okay. So you practice professionalism yourself. If you expect people to be professional, be professional yourself. Do not do not expect anything from them if you cannot give them. Okay. So when when somebody is talking during the meeting and you want yourself to be heard you make the other person finish the talking first if you want these people also to listen to you when you are talking so you always practice professionalism okay honesty if you are an honest person if you are an honest leader chances are your people will also be honest and your people will help you think about ways so that 
you can solve a problem because you are honest to them that this is our problem. Uh, I always I always tell my people, um, if you are not honest to me, I cannot help you. In the same manner that if not if I'm withholding information from them that they should know, they cannot be able to help me in resolving if there would be conflict in the future. So everybody Ikaw, you as a leader, you should be honest. And you should be generous as well. Generous with what? You should be generous with your time. You should be generous with your empathy, your your ability to listen empathically to your people. Um, our work as managers and supervisors or leaders sometimes transcend beyond the, the professional level. You know? Sometimes when people trust us so much, when our people um, really got the hang of telling you, uh, these are my personal problems, I would like to ask for, I would like to ask for your opinion. So you should be generous. You should be, sometimes people would just like to be listened to. They just want to have a, a sounding voice, meaning somebody will just listen. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to advise, okay? Miss Tinger said, honesty is always the best policy, correct, correct, okay? So you should be generous, uh, not only in terms of the material things, but also with the, with your time, with your talents. For example, if you are not generous, you will not want to teach your people. I remember when I was very new in Apple computers, um, there were... There were people who came ahead of me who were in training, no, who were in marketing support, and then we developed modules for training already. When we recruited new trainers, what they wanted to do was let them study it the way we did. I told them, why do we have to do that? When we can do something, we can help them learn easier than we did. I'll change my spectacles huh, so I can read for a while. There's a comment from Miss Francia. I always put in my heart and my mind that my boss is my God. It really helps me a lot to be more effective to my work. And because of that, I learned how to respect my employees, regardless of what position they have. Thank you very much. Okay. So she she's regarding her boss really well, no? So, as I was saying, you cannot be generous if um, you cannot coach people, you cannot train people if you're not generous because um, you would want them to, to do the things that you have done so that they would learn it the, the hard way. Why would you want to do that when they can learn it the easier way and they can be more productive? So, you should be generous in many ways in terms of your time, in terms of your of your talents, uh, you can share you can share with the team the the talents that you have, so you can you can your team can already do the thing. No? Then you have to have humility. A humble leader is always looked up to by his people. What do you mean? What do you mean humility? That would mean setting your feet on the ground every time. You may be the leader, but you're not God, okay? And you're still a human being. So you have to keep your, your, your feet down on the ground. You will never know what will happen next. So stay humble. Why do you have to? Actually, if, if you look at the, if you look at us, uh, workers, us people, if this is our economic level now, and we were given an opportunity to raise a little bit that's economic level we adjust our expenses right we adjust our personality based on our economic level so humility is left down below so uh, you should be humble every time because you can you can you can deal with a lot of people with a humble heart 
uh, even if other people look so um, boastful or braggarts, you should be humble yourself. You should not adjust your humility according to your economic situation. Don't. Because later on, you'll have no other place to go. Okay? And you'll be pulled down. Okay? Then, empathic listening. Ability to be able to listen with understanding. So when you listen with understanding, you have to learn to cast away all the cobwebs in your heads. What, what do I mean? You listen to the things that you want to listen to. And while you're listening, you are thinking of several other things that you can use to rebut the person, to tell the person of your opinion. When we listen empathically, we remove all these things and we just focus on one person. I would like to share with you an example. I have a friend who we do not, who I meet once in a while, but every time she would tell me, Mama Bell, let's meet. I miss you. Okay. So we agree on a particular date and time. So when we're in the restaurant, I thought I was missed. But every time we're, we're, we're talking, we're supposed to be talking about certain things, she would be engaged on the phone. Okay? That's not respect. <laughs> that's not empathic listening. That, that's not even listening. That's partially listening. So empathic listening meaning you have to give your whole self in that situation without, without other uh, cobwebs in the head. You just focus on the person you are talking to. And then for you to be respected, you have to develop that servanthood in yourself. Leaders are supposed to be servants, okay? Um, in organizations, managers are supposed to be servants of your people. Yes, you manage, but you serve both your people and management, okay? So you develop that sense of servanthood. You try to serve people uh, so that they can accomplish the things that they need to accomplish um, so these are matters of the heart so you look at yourself what i want you to do after this session is you remember the three h the the hand the head and the heart and you think of the areas in those you think of the area of the areas in those three aspects which area would you need development on so that you can develop yourself and gain the respect of your people because respect okay a servant leader must have the ability to understand feelings and emotions of your team so you think of you think of your you think of an area that you feel you need to develop on so that you can be more respected. Is it servanthood? Do you have that humility to, to have that that uh, feeling of servanthood, of being a servant um, without being a muchacho? No? In, we're not saying you're a servant or a muchacho, no. But what we're saying is that every one of us, or well, you remember the Bible, Jesus said, we should be servants to our brothers and sisters okay ma'am is it good po ba ang magpautang ka sa mga under cover mo na mga employees um meron akong i have worked with with companies where yung utangan hindi pinapayagan uh in one way or the other, it would leak out. No, kung nagpautang ka. Pero, uh, personally sa akin, kung magpapautang, it should be on a personal level. So, kasi ganito siya eh. There are those, for example, the person who owed you money resigned. So, you cannot collect. So, what you want to do, what you do is, you go to HR, you, you, you tell HR, deduct from the final pay. Um, 
it cannot be done by HR. So it should be a very, yes, Miss Grace, that should be a very, very personal thing. Very personal. You do it because, not because you are the head or you are a, a co-worker, but probably because you are col you are friends, probably. Because you will not, I do not know, you will not owe money to somebody who is not your who is not your friend or you're just an acquaintance with. You not, you will not owe money. So if the loan is uh, given out of friendship, let it remain to be friendship. So in other words, I experience a lot of that. Uh, I would lend money to people, to my subordinates or some people in the other departments, but I would not think of collecting them at all because if you if you have difficulty collecting will uh, would i resort to telling it to asia i cannot do that so it should be very very personal okay all right so uh, yeah miss miss melanie it happened to me a lot a lot of times so for example when i was with a security agency the the, the security guard could not was advised to report to work already but since he was on vacation for a long time he didn't have money to for fair so my team even my super my i have a, per, a person under me was a supervisor we put up money together and let's okay you have one week one week money for your for your transportation we do that we can do that we do that secretly but sa akin lang, if you would like to lend money wag yun na siyang account <laughs> Oh, oh, kasi normal tayo sa HR. We will uh, HR admin. We will, or if we are leaders, people would talk to us, "Ma'am, I don't have money to come to work." So, ikaw naman, from the goodness of your heart, gusto mong tumulong. So when you help, you help on a personal level. Oh, oh, tama si Miss uh, si Judith. Yung pautangan minsan hindi siya hindi siya nagiging nagiging cause ng misunderstanding. So sa akin ha, personally, I have done the, that a lot of times so many people, not necessarily my people, for example, security guards, they would tell me, they would tell my team, ma wala na po akong pamasahe, isang cut off po ganyan. So but that is on personal. Kung bayaran ka, salamat pag hindi okay na lang. Okay na lang kung hindi. But in many companies that is discouraged and um in many companies um i have worked with there is a facility for employee loan so if you have emergencies you can you can loan from the company okay but i would tell you if you want to do that from the goodness of your heart let it be a a personal matter okay okay Let me just uh, on this on this particular slide, um, especially now that we are experiencing a lot of troubles communicating with our people. For example, we 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 have uh, we have online meetings. For example, we talk to our people through internet through emails um, the thing is that however you talk to your people there should be politeness there should be courtesy every time whether it is written whether it is face to face online uh, i noticed that well i just received a correspondence from a friend that the new normal would say that when you face your when you face your your boss online you should be facing your boss as if you are in the office so you look professional when you when you face your boss or your teammates no okay see si john robert i think that being a servant leader doesn't mean that you have to be totally all out to your subordinates okay when it comes to the heart, it must always know. It must always know that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, 
it doesn't really matter. Still, the 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 medium doesn't matter. Still, the the rules in writing, the rules in in meetings should still prevail, whether you are face to face online or face to face physically, or you are uh, writing an email. I notice in many cases that our the younger generation would email to you in a text manner don't allow it so a professional a professional text message should be complete no abbreviations um terms are correct no um you you teach your people also that uh, um when when they write when they when they email when they text you avoid the um the abbreviations because it it, it can create misunderstanding. No? So it doesn't matter what medium you are using. What matters is how you conduct yourself when you deal with office matters. Always know your limitations, okay? So that your position will not be compromised as HR or, or as a colleague. Okay, so you should be very careful about these things, no? As I said earlier, you don't normally loan out something to people you do not really know. Uh, you loan out only to your friends, not acquaintances, no? All right, so um, in 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 holding online meetings you should tell your people when we are online uh, let's say you're on zoom or on google meet or whatever platform when we are online you are expected to be in corporate attire and you should be you should be taking down notes on what we what we are discussing and afterwards after the meeting you should summarize or you should assign somebody to summarize the discussions of the meeting and everybody is copy for niche no so what I'm saying is that you do the same thing. It's just that you're you're far away from one another. Okay. So the 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 good thing now is that we have this technology. Okay. But we should make use of it properly. In other words, when you are conducting meeting, nobody's allowed to be to be in house dress or eating while you're meeting, okay, or doing something else taking care of the child while you're meeting, and so on and so forth. So it is respecting one another. That's a show of respect, no? So you should not, um, you should, if you are the leader of the team, you should state it. You should tell it to be the, the, the accepted norm when you are doing the meeting. You set it. You set that tempo. Okay. Um when do you show disrespect to your people for all you know sometimes you show your disrespect um when do you show it when you suddenly or frequently change your mind that is some a show of disrespect you ignore people's ideas i told you nobody is nobody has the monopoly of intelligence um, sometimes, even the smallest people in the organization, they have good ideas that you can use, you can think about, you can ponder upon, okay? When you waste other people's time, like what? You make them wait. Or you make them submit reports now, but you will not, uh, you will not review their reports and not give them feedback on their reports. So... You waste your people's time. You assign tasks beyond the person's capability or the person is not really capable of doing the job at all. So that is a sign of disrespect. In many companies, if you are given a task that uh, if you're given a task that's not within your your control or something that you really do not know, or you're not given a task at all, chances are you are being eased out. Am I right? that is a sign that you're being asked out okay so if you are a team leader 
this is this would be very demotivating to your people if you assign them tasks that are that they're not capable of doing or if you don't assign them at all any task so you better tell them honestly what's wrong okay i i i have worked with a company where if the if the president who doesn't like you anymore he will he will make you come to work every day but he will not make you report on your table you will be placed in another place that you do not like until you tell him Ayoko na po. i'm i'm leaving that's not good we call us pay the pay we tell you're not performing sorry or you're not fit for the team sorry but you have to do the due process no but i mean let's not disrespect people just because we don't like their faces ayoko sa kara mo kaya ayaw kita no? hindi disrespect kita breathing what is this breathing on the name of the person breathing on the name of the person you the, per, the your head your boss is practically at your back when you're doing something your boss is looking at what you're doing don't do that that's disrespect for the person if you believe that this person can do the job and you have agreed on a timeline then let the person do the job don't breathe on the neck of the person that is disrespect i tell you don't ever do that because that that is disrespecting the craft of the person that person himself you're disrespecting him. so if you have given a task you agree that on this day you will have to submit to me then expect that he will submit if he doesn't then deal with it but if he does that means he understood you okay just don't breathe on the name of your people and then public humiliation you make fun of somebody in the team you give you give examples funny examples using at the mercy of the at the expense of the person so public humiliation that is disrespect you don't even do that to your children i remember when we were young we were not allowed to be in front of guests so but our parents will not humiliate us in front of the guests they will wait until the guests would leave that is their, their respect for us so respect people do not humiliate them if at all you will want to say something bad to that person, do it in private. Don't announce it. Like, for example, if the person is uh, being eyed to be separated from the company because of something, do not announce it. Number one rule of reprimand, reprimand in private. Never, never reprimand in public. You will lose all the respect of your people and you are showing a lot of disrespect for people um as a worker you should always remember you may be the head but you still are an employee so in some degree you and your team members are the same employees it's just that you have a different responsibility a different accountability a different authority but suma total pareho kayong empleyado so you don't have any right to uh, humiliate somebody in front of other people if you need to do that if you need to reprimand somebody do it in private i know a lot of boss shouting around the office i've seen them also <laughs> i've seen the, i've seen a lot of bosses shouting but what do they get they get people who just smear uh who just uh would that mind them so if you if you want to if you want to say something bad or negative to your people um say it in private and then there are times when we don't want to face our subordinates particular subordinates we don't want to we avoid face-to-face -face communication with them um this i can share with you we will always find people that we do not like there's no organization that you like everybody there's times when this particular person you do not like this person but this person is the one who is to do the job what can you do 
you cannot avoid face-to-face -face communication because if you do if you do it to me for example because you don't like my cara i will feel be, be i will feel really very disrespected so minimal the minimum relationship that you should maintain is a professional relationship inside the office so even if you don't like me but we have to work together we have to work together there are people that i never liked in the previous company that i worked with but we worked together successfully for two years we were able to give the results the company wanted but we were never friends okay so avoid if you are avoiding somebody on a face-to-face -face communication you are disrespecting the person do not you'll not become a lesser person if you face that person you will not okay and then when you do not recognize achievements of people you are somehow disrespecting your people you should learn to recognize you're not uh, you're not um, obliged to give rewards but at least recognize that you you were able a pat on the back is okay a thank you is okay i mean it, you won't lose anything if you recognize so if you're not recognizing achievements that could be a sign of disrespect for your people okay let's proceed now, the next thing is, I am harapin ng here. That's disrespect. That, that, that is uh, the, the comment of Miss Jen. That's the situation of Miss Jenny. Ang hirap nun pag HR ka, tapos ikaw yung napapagitnaan. So you, as HR, you should be very, very um, skilled to be able to resolve that. I have seen a lot of, <laughs> in my previous company, that's, that's the last company I worked with on full time, when I saw a lot of old managers who are really, who were really not behaving as managers. And uh, hmm, pretty difficult for HR. Ayaw harapin si head. Reprimand. Reprimand in private, but recognize the good task of your staff as to stop in public as a show of appreciation. Thank you, ma'am. Correct. How will you deal with disrespectful boss? If there is disrespect, uh, I, I'm just answering Miss Sarah, no? If the disrespectful boss is also an employee, that boss has a boss. Okay. For as long as you have a concrete a concrete um, situation that you can pre present to the boss of your boss, that would be okay. Or initially, maybe you can talk to that disrespectful boss that um, you have been disrespected several times and all this. Otherwise, if the boss is also an employee, he also has a boss. So you can talk to the boss of the boss. Okay? because i don't think uh the code of discipline applies only to the staff because normally the code of discipline applies to all employees and your boss is also an employee and being such he is also answerable to the code of conduct so initially if you do not want the way your boss is disrespecting you you can talk to your boss directly if you have the heart now, if you do not have, you can make a report to your to the boss of your boss or to HR. That's the time you can go to HR. So HR will look into the situation. I have done that a lot of times. When the staff would not be able to go through the boss because the boss was uh, very impossible. So the staff would make reports, give it to me, and then I'll make a write-up. I'll go to my boss, and my boss would say, let's process, let's talk to this manager. Okay? So there, there's always a way to do that so that you can correct whatever are wrong things that are being done by the 
other employees in the organization. So, bosses are also employees in the organization. So, dapat meron diyang babanggaan sa code of conduct. Okay, acknowledge good job whenever it's due. Ang hirap po pagsabihan yung boss na nagmumura sa loob ng office from second floor hanggang sa ground floor. So, yun ang, yun ang sagot ko, Miss Melanie. If that is the case, you can talk to the boss. Or if not, you can write your incident report to either to HR, to the boss, or to the boss of your boss. Okay. And HR will be able to look at the offense against the code of conduct. What if the boss is also the owner? Yan, yan ang problema natin. Pag si boss ang owner. Normally, ganyan sila nagbibehave. So what can you do? Si owner ba ay... Sino yung owner na yun? Yan, I have, I have a boss who was the owner of the company and who would shout at anyone. In that company that I worked with, I had that boss. But there was a consultant an executive consultant that that studied that. No? So, but before the, the executive consultant was hired, there was uh, there were talks already down below, okay? Because the boss is the is the child of the owner, so reporting to the father. So what happened was, all the other managers here they made a report to the father, and the father hired an executive coach for the for the boss. So that can be done as well. And yun, yun ang mahira pagka, pagka ano, ang boss ang may-ari din. But some owners are very sensitive also, especially if, for example, the old owner is handing down the, the company to the son or to the daughter or to the child. So they are, they are more curious about how will my child handle this this. Uh, this uh, company. Um, one concrete example that I can think of right now is when the I worked with a company where there were five, there was, there used to be one CEO and then when she retired, the five children became part of the executive team and then was headed by the second boy. So they were fighting each other on on the authority and all that. So what happened was the old the CEO hired an executive coach for all the the children. So that can be done. Okay. Good thing boss of napakabait na. Masaya kapag mabait ang boss. But uh we cannot disrespect naman the mabait na boss. Okay. All right, Miss Evelyn. Actually, in the corporate world, there are two rules. The first rule, the boss is always right. The second rule, if the boss is wrong, refer to rule number one. So the boss is always right. But, Young bosses now do not adhere to that anymore while they know that they have the privilege. But many bosses now are more open to develop their managerial skills. That only happens when the, when the bosses are sometimes full of themselves that, uh, that that is their style, autocratic. But majority of the bosses that I have worked with now are... Ah, I remember the the recent company I worked with as a very young young entrepreneur. A lot of people were complaining about it, and I found out that the, that's the reason why I was hired as a consultant. He, the the boss told me, Miss Bell, I was um, I was given feedback by the people that I am I'm not a very good boss and all that. So I I sought your help so I can be a better. Boss. So he himself, because he's young and he wants to understand the people better. So there are a lot of bosses like that. But there are bosses whose style is still autocratic. So yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, wag kayong, because you know this already, ayoko nang matuto ng iba. Because 
management also is evolving. The management concepts are evolving as well. So every so often, you will see different different styles of leadership, different styles of management. No? Uh, minsan nakakababa na po ng uh, masigawan ka ng, buo, ng opo, tama. Oh, ang HR. <laughs> Ay, ang hirap noon. Uh, baka kailangan po ng ano, kailangan, kasi yung HR head ba is the Mr. Harold. Harold may. Babae ba to lalaki? Double name pero lalaki babae. Um, basta the rule of thumb, to me, the rule of thumb is if that head is also an employee, look at your code of conduct. Because all code of conduct would cover all employees. So if it isn't covered by the code of conduct, you can refer to the code of conduct. You can do the due process. You, you make a report. <laughs> si Miss Mary Grace, I had to dance even though I don't like the tune. Mahira po. Uh, that, that's because we're part of the team. No? So talagang papagtsagaan mo na ikaw na ganyan ng iyong boss. The boss is always okay. I had a boss that would not even tell me if I did wrong or right. <laughs> And that's difficult. That's, this, that's also difficult. What would be the best way to deal with such bosses? Do you have to be always passive to the point that you don't want to approach your boss out of fear? Or do you have to be active and immediately file a complaint? Ah, okay. As I was saying earlier, Mr. John, um, when you refer to the refer to your code of conduct, um, if your boss is an employee, chances are his part is covered by the code of conduct so you can you can lodge your 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 complaint if there if you have a complaint if you cannot do anything with talking to your boss no so you can lodge your complaint to your hr or to the boss of your boss okay there should be a way to do that because for as long as your objective is not to put down the person but to just to have peace in your in your workplace okay so initially your objective is to correct the of the, the behavior of the person and by correcting it sometimes you need to use the code of conduct i'll proceed i think yes. i just have uh, the last three slides no actually two slides na lang yan. Now, yes ma'am sisingit I... lang ako doon sa mga oh. boss Oh. Singit lang ako. Uh, para hindi na tayo lumayo mamaya. Okay, regarding, I want just to share my experience sa boss. Because, uh, ang sabi ko nga na baka malas ko lagi sa mga boss. Lahat ng boss ko uh, is talagang kung magmura, kung magano, is talagang nakakahiya. Yung bigla kang lilit na parang duwende. Parang ganon. Uh, just want a short ano lang. I have a boss before. sa I was in Emirates. Uh, he was an Egyptian. Pagpasok pa lang niya ng hotel, yung receptionist, pagsisigawan na niya, and, and ano, bubaga, in front of sa mga guests, sinasabi niya anong mali ni front office, anong mali ni ganito. So, it was my first day, no? Sabi ko, ay nakakatakot naman itong amo ko. <clears throat> On the second day, uh, may meeting kami. So, I was the secretary and the HR, so nagtitake ako ng minutes. Eh, meron silang mga ano na hindi ko talaga maitindihan. Eh, nagbati na ako, uh, sir, sorry, bigla akong binato. Eh, kasi binato akong, uh, tawag nito yung pental pen. Eh, di para akong na-shock, parang hindi ano, sa harapan ng mga managers. And it was my first time, it, and it was my second day. So, feeling ko, ayoko na. So, after that meeting, bago mag yan, nagbigay ako ng resignation. Kasi nandun ako sa punto na hindi ko kaya yung ganon. Parang, paano ako re-respetuhin ng mga managers kung mismo boss ko hindi ako nire-respeto? Binigay ko resignation ko. Tanong niya sa akin, bakit ka nag-resign? Eh, siguro, hindi ko kaya. Umiyak ako. Sabi ko, kasi sir, hindi ko kaya yung pagsisigaw-sigaw nyo sa umaga pa lang, pagpasok nyo, naninginig na ako and everything. Niya, bakit? 
Kasi sir, alam nyo, ang feedback ng tao, susunod ng tao po sa inyo dahil takot sila. Pero ang hirap ng pagkatalikod ninyo, galit sa inyo. So doon niya na-realize na, ganun ba yun? Sabi ko, yes po. If you want respect, uh, if you want a good productive employee, kailangan makagain ng respect. Not true pagmumura, nagagalit, hindi yun. Susunod ang tao sa iyo dahil mahal ka. Mas magandang magtrabaho ng ganon. Doon niya na-realize, after doon, kinabukasan, parang magic, biglang nagbago, naging mabait. So, yun yung isang klaseng boss na pwede mong kausapin siguro kahit terror in, in a good time, yung parang anuhan lang, but maybe to let them realize. Kasi may rami akong kilalang boss na feeling nila na kapag nagagalit sila at nagtatapang-tapangan, susundin sila. Pero hindi nila alam yung realidad after nung pagtapang-tapangan nila. So yun yung isang klaseng boss. Then I have one boss, ito yung may-ari. Kapag may ginawa kang mali, alam mo, first floor hanggang third floor, alam yung pagkakamali mo. Ganun na klaseng boss. Then one time, inutusan ako magpa-serox. It was lunch time. Bawal kami, wala kaming pantry, wala asing kakain kami sa cubicle nam, even you're a manager. So kumakain ako, tinawag niya ako, magpa-serox ka. Sa loob-loob ko, manager ako, sa serox. Okay, fine, walang problema, serox ako. Pero it takes me, like, say, one minute, two minutes, kasi I need to cover my food. Pagpunta ko dun sa seroxan, biglang tinapon yung papel sa harapan ng mukha ko at pinagsisigaw ako na para akong hindi, para bang... Paano ako, kumbaga para ako hindi tao. So right there and then, siguro, I decided na kasi ayaw na ayaw ko talaga nasisigawan. Nag-resign ako. Then sinabi niya sa akin, sinigaw siya, bakit ka nag-resign? Sinabi ko sa kanya, pasigaw din. Kasi sir, we need respect. We don't need your shout. If you want to follow you, please give us respect. Tumalikod ako, din kinabukat. So, sabi niya dun sa isang admin manager namin, ano yung sinasabi ng mga to? So, walang gusto magsalita. Bumalik ako, narinig ko kasi. Sabi ko, Sir, tao kami, hindi po kami hayop. Ang hayop nga po kapag sinasaktan, nangangagat. Kami pa po kaya. Then, ayun, still di, nung pagkaalis ko, ang balita ko naman, medyo naglaylo siya. Nagbago yung pakikitungo niya. Siguro, yun lang, siguro sa mga na-experience ko, siguro yun lang. They need a realization na hindi pala tama yung ginagawa nila. Takot lang kasi may magsabi. Kaya siguro mayroon nang sabi natin, himala na isang tao na magsasabi sa kanila na matapang na, hey, you're doing it wrong. So, yun lang. Yun lang yung nag experience ko. Sa sobrang emotional ko noon, at ganit na galit ako sa kanya na is nasasabi ko. But, naging sacrifice yung word ko, nag-resign ako, I have to go. Wala akong certificate of employment kasi nga galit si boss, but at the back of it, alam ko na-realize niya na tama yung sinabi ko. You cannot let your people follow you kapag walang respeto. Kasi you need to gain respect. Ultimong janitor, you have to gain respect para magkaroon ng mas productive. Yun lang. Kasi almost relate eh. Sabi ko, anis, ano na ako? Eager ako mag, ano, kasi puro ganun yung boss ko. <laughs> Ayun okay. na, Miss Bell. Kayo uli. <laughs> uh, one is, if you can if you can be able to talk to the boss, no? or you can write to the boss that you're having problems with him like this. Or, if it doesn't work, you can go to, you can write your incident report and go to your HR or to the boss of your boss. And then have the person be subjected to the code of conduct. That is, if the if the boss is also an employee now you have to remember also that is a style Auto autocratic leadership is a style it's a style of the person that may be coming from um uh from his own frame of reference so it's what you can take it's what you can tolerate of that or what you can respect of that particular style but that is also a style in leadership okay let's proceed when do you know you're losing people's respect your people lose lose respect in you number one they cross boundaries they do not they just do do things um the way they wanted it without uh referring to you or seeking your approval or ignoring your instructions or commands when they when they 
don't meet that time. Okay. Um, when people are showing deviations from regular, that may be asking you for help. So, for example, if your people are not uh, submitting things on time, deadlines are not met. Either sinasadya ng mga tao or simply hindi nila alam. So, incumbent upon you as leader to look into what's the real problem. Okay? But if people sinasadya nilang hindi imit ang deadline, maybe they are showing disrespect to you. If communication is superficial, oo, oh, oo, oh, oo, oh, oo, oh, 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 pero walang, wala namang, wala namang nangyayari, no? And then they do not listen. Like if you're having a meeting, no one's listening to you when you are you are presiding a meeting. Or there are cliques formed in the team. So there are people grouped together having their own agenda or discussing things. So these are some signs that you have to look into, to look uh, to to be aware of that um, may you may be losing the respect of your people. Okay. Um, for example, in our situation now, when we do online communication with people, that's why I, I said earlier, if you if you show to your boss that you are wearing a house dress in a meeting, that is a sign of disrespect. No? So as leaders, even at the time of this very difficult pandemic, you should be worried about these things. You should look at these things and remind your people. Because that's also not disrespect only to you, but disrespect to the other members of the meeting team. So you should look at these signals that people are not disrespecting you or the other people in the organization. Now, how do you get how do you get back the respect of the from others, from your people, or from other people in the in the organization? I-assess mo yung sarili mo. Mag-introspection mo na. Tingin mo na sa sarili mo. What is it? What, what is wrong? What have I not done? So look at yourself first rather than looking at what the people have done. Look at yourself first. And then after that, you ask people. You ask your immediate team, for example. Why, why is everyone not attending to the meeting? You may ask them. And then you tell them your intentions. So again, you have to be honest with people. No? Uh, if you're not honest with your team members, um, chances are they will not respect your decisions because they feel that you're hiding something from them. And then try to understand their point of view. So... I mentioned this in the two sessions that I've done. Um, you have to really understand what your people mean, what they really mean. Uh, it's not listening, hearing, and then you cast your 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 judgment on things. No? So you try to understand the point of view of your people. That's why I was saying earlier that you have to learn to be open in communication. Okay, so you can understand your people. Try to wear their shoes. If you were in their shoes, how would you, how would you perceive something? Okay, and then you give the person a chance to change the behavior toward you. So, when when the glass is shattered, you cannot easily put it back. You have to put some glue to it so that it would put back. But there are traces of the shatter no so same is true with relationship when the relationship is shattered it's very difficult to put back to normal so you have to give chances to the person you you have to give chance to yourself you have to forgive yourself if you have done something really wrong in the process you have to forgive yourself as well so you can move on that's why it's important that if something happened you ask people, you assess, you ask people, you tell your people your intention so that you can easily, you can you can slowly go back to the normal um, way of relationship, no? 
self-evaluation is yan po dapat lagi tayong ganoon um we should always look at ourselves for when something goes wrong whether on a professional or personal level ask yourself first ask yourself first assess yourself in which area have i done wrong so that i can fix and then ask people what happened why did we go to this point and i realized in many circumstances in my life that i really have to find time to forgive myself so that i can move on for example there's a big blunder that i've done i have to look at myself wallow for a while and think of what have i done what can i what could i have done better and all that and then afterwards okay it happened i'm sorry it happened but i have to move on so you have to you have to forgive your others but you have to forgive yourselves to move on okay and lastly finally can we miss judith can we have um the video played Ah uh, yes ma'am, pa-remove na lang po nung ano nung slides niyo po para ma-i-play po yung video. All right. All right. Thank you. There is a la the last video that I would like to share with you. This is this is something that's a very simple, very elementary, but we can get something out of it. Okay, thank you. Thank 
you. Okay. So to, to sum it all up, the, 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 the video is very elementary, but it's teaching us the golden rule. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Treat others as you would have them uh, treat you. That's biblical, you know? Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, everybody's creation of God. So, and God said, we were, the Bible says that we were created in God's image. So each one of us, there is God. So we should respect one another as we want to be respected. Let's share whatever we have here. Let's let's share, and then let's not make fun of others. We are different people. Even twins are different. Um, there's no one who is. There's no two persons in this world who are exactly or identical to one another. Even the twins are not. Be nice to people, even if they are different from you. Don't hit them. Don't hurt them. Be kind. So, ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na ito. Sana you were able to get a thing or two from here and uh, you can be able to develop yourselves to become better leaders of your companies. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Yes, hello. I'm back again, but with your in beauty. Thank you, thank you very much, Miss Maribel, uh, for a very informative day sa dito sa webinar okay it's now again uh we are open again for the thing uh for the q a if any question please uh write it down chat it and we'll we will answer you kaya wag muna kayo mag umano still we're still continuing okay uh may mga may mga tanong pa kayo do you have any clarification? Meron kayong gustong i uh, additional malaman? Do you have any concerns? Okay. Uh, while we're waiting for the uh, other question, I would like to take this opportunity. Um, Philippine Society of HR and Admin, it's now offering a one-on-one -on -one coaching. What do you mean one-on-one -on -one coaching? Uh, gaya na sinasabi natin, uh, we have our talent. Meron tayong mga talento sa atin. Pero minsan hindi natin nalalaman, hindi natin na-realize na, na kung yun na pala tama na ginagawa. We have some decision na we don't... Oh, wait. Error ako. Uh, naririnig nyo pa rin ako? Oo. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Okay. Naririnig I'll continue. Ako. Okay. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to be get health, in the minimum amount lang naman siya, uh, you can give us an email, your details, and we can schedule for coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, this is, ev it, kumbaga, ito yung panahon na maganda magpa-coach tayo, especially nowadays. Marami kasi tayong mga ideas, marami tayong gustong gawin, kaso feeling natin wala kasi walang nag-guide sa atin. Uh, to make more clarification about coaching, uh, I want you to give a floor to Miss Bella again to explain a little bit with uh, coaching and mentoring, which you might be needed kasi marami tayong iniisip ngayon. Uh, kumbaga, it's the right time to be coached. Tama po ba, Miss Bell? Um, during this time, we have so much, we have all the time. Actually, we have more time than ever. When we, when normal things are, are happening, we don't have time to look at ourselves. I've been telling you to look at yourselves, the three H's, the, the head, the heart, the hand. Look at them and find out which areas would you need help on. Um, hindi po masamang humingi ng tulong, hindi po kayo mababawasan ng pagkatakot kapag kayo ay nanghihingi ng tulong. Kasi po, that is how we can develop ourselves to becoming more productive, more effective, becoming better people, becoming better leaders. So, wag po kayo mahiya kung gusto nyo halimbawa, there is a, a particular item that you want to be coached on and you feel that you, you may not be doing it correctly, you can refer to us. You can call Miss Deeth. You can email her and tell her what you need. So we can help you 
in in whatever you are doing. Remember, I, I told you earlier that my apostolate, my apostolate for the rest of the, the year would be to help out people become more productive and effective in the work in whatever way they can. It could be in training, it could be in consulting, it could be whatever form that I would be needed by organizations or people. So don't worry about uh, I do not know such certain things. Somebody won't be on the heart, no won't be on the sending one out. So if you are open to learn, you can learn. It's just a matter of you choosing to learn. Like what we have shared with you this afternoon, it's your choice if you would like to learn it and put it to work. It's also your choice if you want to ignore it. It's okay. It's your choice. But the thing is that if you want help, coaching is helping you um, understand concepts, understand what you're doing better, and helping you perform better. So that, that is a service that we can do for you, a service that we can help you with and support you. There's a question here, Miss Francia. I would like to answer this question. So Miss Francia is asking, Ma'am, paano kapag nag-complain si employee about the employer? Ano po ang gagawin kung kung fired na po siya ng owner dahil sa mga sinabi niya? Una po, Ma'am, ang unang question ko, when, he, when, when the person was fired by the employee, did the person go through the due process? Kung nag-due process po, Umatap lang po kayo sa labor para ipakita ang mga documentation ng due process. Um, in the assumption that the due process was in principle, in form, and in, in, in context ay tama. Okay? So kung tama po ang due process ninyo, wala po kayong dapat sa pangamba. Ganun po talaga. Ang mga empleyado ay pumupunta sa DONE, sa NLRC, as they, as they move because they feel that a great party sila and all. Ang trabaho naman kasi ng NLRC at ng DOLE ay pagliwanagin sa both parties ano yung nangyari at i-resolve yung problema. So if you have the due process and you have documented the process, then you can just report as you are invited by DOLE or NLRC and bring your materials, your papers that uh, this person has gone through the due process. What is the due process? The due process is uh, the, okay. The due process is you may the person explain, and then you may twin letters yan. Tinatawag na twin letters. Number one is the notice of um, notice of uh, explanation, notice to explain, and the number two is the notice of resolution. So you notify the person to explain. The person is supposed to give you a reply. Based on the reply, you base it on the code of conduct if the reply is acceptable or not and just, or you decided to, to make the person be separated from the company, you send a notice of resolution. So those are the two letters required by DOLE. Um, unless you would want to, so, to do some hearing, but minimal, minimum requirement of DOLE is that. So, but you have to document that. So when you when you send a notice to explain and then you receive the notice to the notice the reply and then you send a notice of termination for example uh the first one should have signed the notice of termination but the person should have received it now let me see mahirap po kasi kung ang boss is owner din po kasi expect niya to enter lagi sa side niya mahirap po balance sa dapat ah okay i think uh miss grace miss mary grace I think you have to sit down with your, with your, with the owner of the company. Um, number one, if you have a code of conduct uh, that you are using right now, ipaintindi sa kanya na may code of conduct. At ipaintindi din na merong mga rules and regulations ang dole sa pag-separate ng tao. Na, at maintindihan niya din na may penalty kapag nagkamali ka doon. So, I would like to share with you yung, yung recent client ko na natapos ko lang. Yan yung problema nila. Terminate and terminate. So, ang dami na lang kaasa sa dole. So, it's it's probably just a matter of explaining to the boss self. If we're not able to comply with the requirements of dole, we will have problems. 
pwede kang isara ng ng dole eh, pagka ganyan ang ginagawa mo. So, I think Miss Mary Grace ipa-impa kinkindle sa may-ari. Ano ang obligasyon ng employer sa sa dole sa mga ganitong pagkakataon? Hindi naman 'yan madaling maintindihan. In fact, kung gagawin mo siya ng tama, wala kang problema eh. Kasi pag nag-due process ka ng tama, wala kang problema. Gano'n na to that. I have separated a lot of people in many companies that I've worked with. But I didn't have problems. Even if I would go to Del Dole, I can show them the the documentation of the due process. So gano'n lang siya, ma'am. Gano'n lang siya, Miss Mary Grace. I think the yes. owner has to understand. The owner has to understand uh, the responsibility to Dole and to the employee as well. Actually, yun nga, Miss Grace, you have to let them. Oh, yun nga, yung sinasabi nila, misan kasi may mga owner na talagang uh, they were close talaga yung eyes and ears nila sa kahit anong paliwanag mo. At minsan, uh, lumalabas na ikaw pa yung mali. So, uh, the best thing yata, di ba, tam, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Bell, if kung gano'y ini-insist niya, kailangan magpakita ka ng documents from the dole mm -hmm. na ito talaga ang kailangan mong gawin. Kasi hindi mo kayang ikumbinse si employer o si boss mo na wala kang evidences. Once you present some evidences from the, kumbaga yung mismo ano ng dole, na sir, ito dapat gawin. It's not, ma hindi dahil sa gusto ko. Dahil ito yung kailangan natin gawin. So it will, ano, yeah, you need to get some resources na uh, from dole na yun yung magiging justification mo kung bakit kailangan mo itong gawin at bakit kailangan yun ang kailangan yung action. That's the best thing. Kung even how rude is he, how in, but you need to let them explain and show justification na yun yung tama, not because mabait ka or whatever. Eh, Mahirap talaga. Yan, Miss Mary Grace, pag ganun, sa timo sa kanya, pwede tayong mademanda ng mademanda sa dole at pwede kang stop operation pag laging ganoon. Oo. So, you have to correct it internally. You have to correct it internally, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. Tama si Miss Judith. Maybe you can show him the, the labor code at saka yung mga anong tawag dyan, mga cases na dinicide ng cases. labor even ng, ng Supreme Court. Mga cases na dinicide ng Supreme Court na similar din sa mga ano mo sa mga cases mo para makita niya na hindi talaga nagbibiro ang dole pagdating sa ganito otherwise lagi kayong lagi kayong pupunta sa dole pwede kayong ma-penalize ng dole if you do that on top of magbabayad ka pa din sa empleyado lalo na ipawa chinarge ka ng illegal dismissal na prove na illegally dismissed yung tao so you will have to pay or reinstate yung tao Bayadan mo yung time na mula nung hindi siya nagkatrabaho hanggang ma-resolve yung case. So, that would be pretty much difficult on the part of the owner. Masyadong mahal yun. You can even be closed for operations. So, if he's ready for that, eh, sige lang. Pero, mm. if you can present it, you can show jurisprudence. Yung mga cases na natapos na ng labor at saka ng Supreme Court na, na, na similar dun sa cases nyo para makita nila, makita ng owner na hindi ito biro-biroan. Hindi ito biro-biroan. Just ano na, gather some ano lang, information to show your boss mm -hmm. na boss, ito talaga. Hindi dahil, hindi ito galing sa akin. Uh, it is a mandatory and it, this is by the rules. Uh, I'm not I'm not make out of anything. Siguro that's the best thing. Finite documents, labor code, explain mo sa kanya, that's, yun lang yung pwede nating gagawin talaga. Kasi meron talaga mga boss na Parang kabayo, nakasiradong gano'n. Oo, 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 oo. So, taw, and yun nga, sa mga HR na audience natin, no, is especially if you're doing um, uh, employee discipline, documentation is very, very important. Huwag niyong imimiss yun. Huwag niyong imimiss yun. Yan ang uh, experience ko sa mahabang patak ko sa HR. Um, you really have to do good documentation of the processes that you've done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miss Bell, pinakita na daw niya lahat eh. As in talagang ang ano lang niya eh, eh talagang may kailangan daw eh magawa ng paraan ni HR. Ano <coughs> yung magic? <laughs> ah.
Uh, <laughs> ano yan? Internal kasi ninyo eh. So, dapat internal yung ano, yung approach. Kayo yung, I remember one company, one very, very big company I joined in 2008. Pagdating ko doon, yung SIL, hindi binabayaran. So, ang dami namin kaso sa network. So, ang tao na hindi ganoon. Dapat bayaran natin. Kaya ang daming tao, walang libong tao. So we had to develop a system just for SIL because we had 8,000 and above people. So at any one month, we will have around 500 to 700 claims. So you really have to do it internally. Um, if you legal department, kayo, refer to your legal. You tell your legal. You, you refer to legal para ano para meron siyang nakitang legal advice na hindi to gawa-gawa ng HR hindi to dahil mabait lang ang HR kundi dahil ito ang batas so do that kung may HR kayo para para matulungan siya at matulungan yung company kasi hindi yan sa inyo Miss Mary Grace, I think you have to refer to your legal. Uh, you have to bend the rules. Um, yung bending of the rules, Miss Mary Grace, um, basta dapat yung minimum na requirement ng dole ay ginagawa nyo. Kasi if you just bend the rules na hindi siya hindi siya um, acceptable sa dole, you will have problems also pag may nag-complain na ano, na empleyado. Bending of the rules, you have to really be, be very careful with that. Yes, you can bend yeah. the rules, pero sana, yung pag binend mo siya, better ang kalalabasan niya. You still are at a minimum ng dole or better than what is dole providing. <coughs> Mm, Siyempre, kapag once we did something, ang hahanapin ni Dole, hindi naman si owner, it's the HR. So, tayo pa rin ang haharap nun ng mga sasagot to sa mga questions ni Dole. So, uh, yun nga, mahirap, mahirap uh, kapag nag nakikipagtalo sa boss, but keep on fighting for your stand. Kasi kahit sabihin natin nakakastress na lagi tayo nakikipag-debate kay boss, um, uh, Yun lang, yun talaga eh. If you follow with them at the end of the day, di ba Miss Bell, parang kapag gano, sige lahat na, alam mo may mga problema, one day, sige, babay na. <laughs> oh, si Miss Mary Grace, si Miss Mary Grace, siya din daw ang ginagawa ng legal. Ayaw uh, gumastos ng kanyang amo. So, uh -huh. ayun na nga lang talaga Miss Grace, uh, what we can do na, pakita mo na lahat, just keep on ano na lang, convincing your boss na ito yun, and bending the rules is not the is the it's not the right choice for it. Uh, we need to follow it because anytime nag inspection si dole and anytime hindi natin na expect na biglang may tao na biglang magreklamo yari tayo. <laughs> so I think Miss Mary Grace on a case to case basis, let's say for example there's a case and the boss wants this, you tell him sir these are the these are the repercussions if we do this, if we do this, these are the repercussions. Para, ano, para kita niya. Para kita niya kung anong pwede mangyari. Anong kakalabasan niyo? Anong kakasuungan niyo bilang kumpanya? Kasi yun yun, ma'am. You cannot, you cannot run away from the rules. There are always rules that govern our operations. Pero mahirap talagang paunawa sa mga may-ari niya. It took me a long while. Like it took me I think mga 5 months bago ko nasabi sa bago ginawa ng may-ari ang recommendation ko. Pero I think yun, Mary, Miss Mary Grace, parang paulit-ulit. Paulit-ulit na pangungulit. We cannot afford this. We cannot afford this. Gusto mo bang makulong? Gusto mo bang magmulta? Yung ganun. I, it happened to me in one of the biggest companies I joined.
Okay. Uh, any any question pa? Uh, everything is clear? Are we good? Are we good? Okay. I wish you good luck, Miss Mary Grace. Ha? I hope uh, you can tell us kung anong naging, naging result. Or if you need help, for example, uh, you have some you have some you have a case that you want to work on and you feel that the boss will again tell you that to do this and that you can refer to us you can you can email us you can text us if uh whatever help we can give you we will do so okay uh, for the certificates give us uh two days within two days we'll be sending it and Again, as I keep on telling, uh, kasi nga we're into a lot of emails. So also check your uh, spams and junk mail. Uh, baka dun maglan yung certificates ninyo. Then, uh, again, I remind, uh, Philippine Society of HR and Admin, if you have any uh, if you have any suggestion na gusto nyong gawin namin at what we're able to help you, just give us a, ano, give us a a message, uh, an email, mas maganda email at least na naka-record rather than in the chat room. Uh, again, to all our participants, thank you very much again, Miss Bell, uh, yeah. for your time and for your knowledge and sharing us again. Uh, ano pa ba masasabi ko? I'm, I'm too much. Sir Harold, by the way, uh, Sir Harold, you're in a national uh, conciliation and board, tama po ba? Sir Harold? Uh, yes, uh, maybe you can help out Miss Mary Grace. Bigla akong, bigla akong pinag-match sila, Miss Belle, eh, no? Uh, maybe you can help uh, Miss Mary Grace do sa mga uh, cases niya. Baka makatulong ka. May, may, may mga documentation you can help Miss Mary Grace. Kasi mukhang nakakaawa. Ramdam ko yung stress ni Grace kapag HR ka, kapag naiipit ka. Ah... <laughs> uh, Siguro uh, hmm. after this one, happy mail ah, po. Ayun, sorry, <laughs> lagi kitang ina-address na sir. Okay, Miss May. Uh, ayun, tama-tama. Uh, I might, mail. siguro, I might email mail. you <laughs> para mag-usap kayo dalawa. <laughs> Miss Judith, I think, <laughs> I, think, I, think I think, Miss Judith, the member should, yes. ano, the member should realize that the very reason why the society is formed is so that we can help one another. So each member yes. have problems. You may throw it into the into the email or the chat room, and then somebody who would want to respond to it. I think that's the essence of the of the society. Why why we form the society? So I think feel free to to text us, message us if there's anything we can help you with. Like for instance, in Miss Harold can help us with Mary Miss Mary Grace. No? So I think that that is what we want to do in the society. We would want each one of us to be of help to anybody who may need our help. No? So thank you very much in advance, Miss May and Miss Harold. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, Miss Harold. Uh, I'll be giving you a message ha, how we can connect with Miss Mary Grace para at least uh, matulungan natin siya. Uh, at least to lessen her burdens. Okay, Miss Allen. Thank you very much. Okay. See you. Yes, thank you very much, Miss Grace. Sige, uh, just wait for my email. Uh, I may... Uh, I may get your contact number so that I can call you personally. Uh, okay, that's all for the day. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Keep God bless one. and keep safe. Kokontakin kita, Miss Grace, and email.